Hi, I'm Christina Mozafari for HIV.gov. Here in Montreal, where today we're talking about the global and U.S. domestic efforts to reach and sustain HIV epidemic control, I have the great pleasure of welcoming today Lois Pace. She's the Assistant Secretary for Global Affairs at the Department of Health and Human Services. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Christina. So, you know, let's just start with, there's been a real focus placed on addressing the HIV epidemic in a bi-directional fashion. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I mean, it really means to me, us doing more intentionally what we should be doing anyway. We should always be thinking about how we can improve our response to this epidemic at home and abroad. And by saying something is bi-directional, we're just saying, okay, we're going to intentionally look to partners in different parts of the world to teach us what we could be doing better and perhaps share our own practices. Can you give me an example of what some of those partnerships look like? Well, uh, for example, our CDC is working on the PEPFAR program around the world, and what we know is that CDC continues to iterate and improve on that work in countries worldwide and in the U.S. And so, particularly in the wake of COVID, we know that we've learned a lot more about surveillance, about health systems, around overall healthcare delivery. And so it's our hope that through some of these conversations, we can real time improve on this work, again, in partnership with these other governments and community leaders. You know, I, th I think a lot of people wonder, why is it so important for the U.S. to be um, engaging in the global HIV, in addressing the HIV epidemic in a global fashion? Well, goodness, I mean, the more we come together, um, the better off we are. Uh, and so I think that just uh, philosophically, um, we know that we are sort of better at this, tackling this huge problem by holding hands and working shoulder to shoulder. Also, I'll just say what's obvious to everyone, which is this is a global problem, right? We are fighting HIV worldwide. And so our response, likewise, has to have that same scope. We can't just focus on this issue within our borders and this builds on a legacy of U.S. Uh, engagements in public health, in health overall around the world. And so our focus uh, worldwide on HIV is no different. You know, there's been a lot of talk here at this conference about the impacts that the COVID-19 pandemic has had on those efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little bit about from your position and your perspective, what some of those impacts have been? Well, they've been uh, varied. I mean, we know that uh, people living with HIV actually were at risk of really facing a lot of other issues outside of the health space. We know that the work in HIV, um, obviously, and access to ARVs, for example, uh, was also at risk of backsliding, but I think what we don't talk about enough is how some of these communities, especially historically marginalized and vulnerable communities, were faced with additional uh, risks or threats when it came to lockdowns. Um, there is increased gender-based violence uh, in the wake of COVID-19 that we've seen through the data. Um, there are also issues um, with uh, people who use drugs uh, or others who are experiencing uh, mental health crises uh, who don't have access to truly uh, important services uh, that provide sort of a wraparound support for them in the wake of their HIV diagnosis uh, and uh, essential support. And so it's really key that we see how COVID is uh, placing these communities at risk, but it's also important to really recognize how programs like PEPFAR have been so resilient in the wake of COVID-19 and frankly, how many of the communities and the providers that support this program also have just broken through and held the line. You know, uh, finally, there, there's been this, one of the themes of this conference has been the recommitment to really um, highlighting the science. Mm -hmm. And a lot of talk of, okay, the science is one thing, but making sure we implement it, making sure it benefits right. the communities mm -hmm. is another. Can you talk about how these partnerships is making that more of a possibility? Yeah, innovation without equity or access is incomplete. And it's something that I mentioned earlier this week at, a, at another event uh, that we hosted. Uh, at the White House on, on this topic. So I think that these partnerships really keep us honest. I think that having this type of bi-directional engagement, right, these convenings, this level of coordination is really ensuring that just as NIH could work towards an HIV vaccine, we can simultaneously ensure that there are communities informing that process and helping us understand where that innovation needs to go and how we can get it there. 
Assistant Secretary Pace, thank you so much for your time today. Of course, thank you.